The Sash Podcast, episode 161, take one. Hi, friends, and welcome back to The Sesh. I'm Janelle, joined by our lovely producers, Corelli and Sydney. This is our first episode back of 2024. Can you believe it? Another year. It's past. Woo! Let's go. (laughs) I am pumped for this year. Um, We haven't recorded in two weeks. I almost said two months. Two weeks, and it feels like a long time. I'm a little rusty, not going to lie. A little nervy of the recording. Um, Also, I'm recording alone. Kendall is out of town still. So, um, yeah, I'm here by myself. Well, not really by myself. I got my two lovely producers here. We're here with you. And I got Charlie. Um, But, yeah, we're really excited to be back for another amazing year of The Sesh. Um, It was a great year last year, and it's only up from here, right, ladies? That's correct. That's correct. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? Um, I'm feeling not the best because this, oh. this keyboard is not connecting. Oh, we I'm still have issues. Key- Perfect. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why, but things aren't working here. So we're starting off the year great. For some reason, our keyboard won't work. Do we really need the keyboard? Yeah, we probably do. Mm, if we yeah, need to look things bit. up. Yeah. Can't look anything up today. Okay. Well, <laughs> guess we're, we're screwed gonna be using our trusty brains oh, today. Trusty brain. My brain was off for two weeks straight. I turned my brain off. Oh, yeah, mine's I like just- mine's like still like cold. Like mine's like um activated by coal. And so, like, you know, like, it's like a train, and mm. we're really slow. We've been really slow. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, still rebooting my brain. I had to start her up this morning. It was rough. But here we are. Um, yeah, we had a great break. I did a lot of... Oh, also, I'm sitting on... Sorry, this is really random. I'm sitting on this side of the um, booth today because when I'm recording by myself and sitting on that side... Because Carly and Sydney are also on that side, so to see them, I have to look over there. And every time I'm recording by myself, I keep like I'm noticing like half the episode. I'm just looking over there, so I figured I'll sit on this side so I can see them easier. Since I'll be talking to you guys most and of the time, you won't have a a kink in your neck, a kink in my old neck. Yeah, I had a really bad kink in my neck last night actually because we have it on our walls of our house the previous people who lived there had these stupid frame things way up high by the ceiling and um we had to get them down and john was on a ladder and i kept like spotting him and i was literally looking like this for like two hours yesterday it was hurting real bad john almost died on the ladder but he didn't (gasps) still here tell a damn story it was a little sketch ladders are scary i give people props who oh yeah use a ladder yeah (laughs) if you're a painter or a if you are a roofer yeah i was gonna say my dad's a roofer and uh scary dude growing up like i mean i would i mean i wouldn't work with him but i'd be on the roofs with him sometimes you weren't on the roof on someone else's roof yeah or like like it wouldn't be like his like it'd be like if you were like working on like a friend's roof or something not like an actual you know what i mean like it was scary and sometimes he'd like make me get up there to like help him oh my god yeah mexican parents yeah <laughs> What'd you say? Mexican parents. My dad was very much like, you need a, he's like, oh, another thing too is I always had the, um, I don't know what it's called in English, um, the um, so liman to pick up the nails and stuff. The magnet, the magnet oh, thing yeah. to oh, pick yeah. up the nails. So that was my job growing up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On the roof? No, 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 on the floor. Oh, on the, yeah, yeah. I give people props to that. It looks fucking scary. It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Oh, I believe it for sure. Yeah. And so is um, crabbing. <laughs> Crabbing. I watched a TikTok on that a few days ago. Got like me thinking. semen? Semen? Like seam, se- people sea at men. sea? Yeah, that is a word, huh? Seamen. Men at sea. sea. Men people at sea. sea. Yeah, like, uh, D- uh, what's that one show? Deadliest Catch? Oh, yeah. Oh, Dude, I used to yeah. love that show. Really? Mm. Oh, yeah. I hate it was that just show. just drama filled. Why? Because uh, I have a weird fear of uh, water and fish. Yo, oh, no, dude, I know, you know yes. that TikTok, dude. Okay, oh, and mm. voice the crawlers. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, Sydney? Oh no. my god, dude. There's oh so god. there's the eye. One time they came. One of those videos came up when I was like in bed, ready for sleep. <laughs> I are they scary? I, uh, maybe not scary to most people, but just the idea of being at sea and there's a huge storm and the the boat like drowns in the sea because mm. of the waves yes Ooh, oh, no. oh, why is it making that noise it's a it's, it's a sound. song that they like always use with oh, 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 oh. like the videos on tiktok i'm surprised yeah. you've never seen it no um yeah. you have what's it called water phobia yeah but there's like an actual like thou- you can't type over there 
We can. We fixed oh, you it. can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you it got fixed. Yep. Yep. Aquaphobia. The, no, the lassophobia. The lassophobia. I don't even know that's how you pronounce it. Is the persistent and intense fear of deep bodies of water. That's exactly what I have. But we need to um uh teach you how to swim. The yes. lassophobia. Yes, the lassophobia. Um yeah no and honestly that's <clears throat> that's that's on my list for this 2024 okay. year. Yep. Um, and again, I. It's not like I cannot swim. I can like paddle once or twice, but then I start freaking out. You know what I mean? Like, can you, um, I can't float. Like, can you tread water? Like keep yourself up? No. I teach you how. Okay. Okay. That'd be fun. We go to the rec center. We yeah. teach Crelly swim lessons. I'm so down. That'd be fun. It really, really would really be. Fun. I honestly, I think it's, it's an, it's an essential skill to know. It is a good skill to know. Yeah. It, you never know when you might need to not drown swim exactly no and that's honestly one of my other biggest fears is drowning um i used to have lots of dreams about drowning (gasps) that's scary yeah 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 one of my fears is like being tied to something that's really heavy like a cinder block and being thrown in the water Ooh. just planted that new fear new fear unlocked unlocked yep Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm gonna dream about that tonight thank you (laughs) (laughs) anyways um we have great show for you guys this week um a lot of different topics that we're gonna go over we're also going to be going over our ins and outs. I know that's like a big trend starting off the new year. It's kind of like New Year's resolutions, but better, but better, I think. A little more fun. So we're going to um, take turns talking about that. And then we have some updates in general um, about some topics that we talked about last year, uh, specifically the eight passengers and um, yeah, a few other fun little stories for you guys. So buckle up. It's going to be a grand old time. But yeah, as recap of the last two weeks, I was kind of a piece of trash for a lot of those days kind of just rotting if you will i was rotting a lot but it was well deserved yeah um, this last year it was a it was a very busy year it was a very Twas. intensive year yes yes and you deserved every oh. minute of rot thank you so did you I think you. you guys worked your asses off we all deserved a good rot yeah and boy did i i went skiing once that was fun um had a good holiday <clears throat> nothing too crazy my mom came and visited, um, but other than that, I did a lot of rotting. Oh, Maggie went to the ER. This is a story for y'all. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah. it was like last weekend or something. I don't remember. About a week ago, a little over a week ago. Um, she was walking really weird. And if you guys don't know, I've t- I think I've talked about this before, but she has back pain, lower back pain. Um, we don't really know exactly what causes it, but sometimes she has flare ups. And, her sciatic nerve. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Poor little sciatic nerve. I don't know. It's something to do with her spine, I'm pretty sure. Um, but anyways, so she was walking weird, and we thought that it was, like, another flare-up. So we gave her some medicine, uh, some pain medicine, turning around really quick and, like, licking her butt, just picking at her butt. And so I was like, let me just check her little booty to make sure nothing's going on. So I lifted up her tail. Oh, it was so disgusting her little butthole well right next to it had like this giant deep purple bump on it and it was like pus and blood yeah this is like very gross so if you don't want to listen to it skip forward but um i I was like holy shit that is something's wrong with her ass was it broken what the the like the the skin yeah it was not i mean something was oozing was it was oozing it was easy. But she's also really furry, so I couldn't really see. And she wouldn't let me. Like, yeah. I would try and she'd be, like, you know, cowering away. But I just knew something was wrong. So we took her to the vet and um, took her to the ER vet. And they took one look. And they're like, yep, pretty sure it's a ruptured uh, anal what, gland. Anal, anal gland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because little dogs and cats. I don't know about other animals, but I know dogs and cats have anal glands next to their little booty holes. Where whenever they go to the bathroom, they extra they express scents from their an- anal glands that like, which is why dogs do that little kicking thing. Yep. Um, after they're done pooping. Yes, and that's why dogs will like smell their each other's butts. Mm. It's like their way to communicate and leave their scent. Um, when they go to the bathroom. So, and I feel like a lot of people know who have dogs. Like you get um their anal glands expressed like at the vet and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's for this reason, but it can happen sometimes where it gets clogged and no expression was happening. No expression was happening. Mm. And then 
because it was clogged, it started getting infected. And, you know, your body's trying to fight off an infection, but it has nowhere to go. So it started swelling up and then got to the point where it like erupted, they said, which is so sad to think about. I felt so bad for her. So it's like she was so miserable. And I asked them, like, how fast did this happen? Because it's like, yeah, and they're like, oh, a few days it can like turn into this. So anyways, we took her in and um, she had to get a little surgery. <laughs> She had to be, like, sedated, not, like, under full anesthesia. You all right there, homie? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I swallowed wrong. <laughs> you swallowed wrong? My own spit, yeah. Dude, that's the worst. I choke on my spit all the time. Oh, my God. It's embarrassing. Well, I'm, I'm dying over here because Cindy and her fucking edamame. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy yeah. has a bag of frozen edamame because she's hot. We don't yeah. really know what's going on. I'm not sure. I'm having a- an episode. An internal episode. She's having, we think it might be like anxiety related or something. Yeah. But she's really hot. I think because um, I drank coffee. But you said yeah. you only had like a few sips. I know. But remember I told you the other day, it's been like weird. I can't <laughs> handle it. I'm too old. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Are you okay? Hello? Corelli. <laughs> oh my God. That sounded really scary. Wait, she's like throwing up. <laughs> Oh my god, this poor child. I feel so bad for her. Okay, we need to go check on her. We'll be back in a sec. Is your holiday hangover making getting dressed feeling like a chore and a bore? Well, welcome the new year with a resolution for a personalized style that reflects the real you, courtesy of Stitch Fix's expert team of personal stylists. Stitch Fix is the best way to shop new styles and brands. You can think of Stitch Fix as your style partner. Your stylist will learn about your taste and collaborate with you on looks you'll love without breaking the bank. And Stitch Fix is so convenient. All you got to do is share your preferences, sizes, and budget, and then Stitch Fix actually sends you five items in a fix right to your door. And with your choices in mind in sizes from XS to 3XL, they'll find your perfect fit. And then what's so great is you get to try everything on at home. You don't have to go to the mall and go to the dressing room. I hate going to the mall and going to the dressing room. I would much rather try everything on in the comfort of my home, and you can keep what you like, and then you send back the rest and shipping and returns are always free. They have over 1,000 brands and styles, so no matter what season of life you're in, Stitch Fix has you covered. And simply order a refresh as needed or set it and forget it with regular fixes. You're in control. And over time, Stitch Fix and their seasoned style experts will match you with greater precision to perfect pieces for you based on the likes and dislikes. It's so easy to use. I love Stitch Fix, especially if I'm going to a certain event or have something coming up. It's really really convenient to have them send you pieces that maybe you wouldn't uh, pick out on your own or wouldn't really know where to go find them that's why i love stitch fix so much and also some of their staples are so good they also have so many accessories and what's so convenient about stitch fix is again it just comes right to your house and whatever you don't want you just send it right back in the mail thanks stitch fix they just get me and they'll get you too Try today at stitchfix.com slash sesh and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash sesh, stitchfix.com slash sesh. Did you swallow? Did you choke? <laughs> you choked on your spit again? I don't know what happened that time. I don't oh know. Oh my gosh, Corelli. I tried breathing in and it got stuck. Are you okay? You need some water? That's how I felt this morning with the the high chew when I was driving yeah, here. So you almost di- yeah, tell them about the high chew. It was literally the exact same situation i was driving and it's snowing here and i yeah, had suck. a high chew on my way in <laughs> and i started coughing and then i was like <clears throat> couldn't breathe and i was like fuck you gotta focus because you're you know it's snowing <laughs> you're and driving i was like what this is a way that someone could die like yeah i've thought about that what happens if you choke while you're driving dude i've thought about that too that's like I, a yeah. lot i was like shit this may be <clears throat> it sorry i'm good oh my god i feel bad for you you're all no, right it's fine it happens a lot <clears throat> oh i don't know how to breathe Okay. It's an interesting day back. Yeah, I think I think we're back. <laughs> Our bodies are having a visceral reaction <laughs> yes. to us working. <laughs> like <laughs> Literally, I was okay. That's probably what it is. I'm sorry. Oh my, oh gosh. my god. Um, sorry about that. What were you no, saying? You're good. We're I was talking about Maggie's butthole. Maybe that's why you're coughing. I, honest, okay. I'm not gonna lie. Like once I got yeah. over there, I started thinking about her butthole, and then it started making me gag. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was gag worthy. I don't have any pictures of the actual incident, but anyway, she went and had to be sedated, and they had to uh, clean out her little booty, basically. And and she had a cone on her head, and she was under a bunch of medications, and she was actually, I've never seen her this sad. Usually, she's very happy and excited to live life, and she was so depressed looking and sad it made me 
feel horrible for her, but she's doing better now, luckily. Poor baby. Um, so yeah, I went to the ER for that. Then I watched a ton of fucking TV, man. Mm. I Ooh, watched true. Vanderpump Rules. Yep. Which I was never I didn't know what was going on with that show, but I just always heard people at the office talk about it, people online talk about it. And so I watched the latest season of Vanderpump Rules, which was very confusing at first because I didn't know who anyone was. But then I, once you get a grasp on it, it's juicy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, it's juicy. I'm an ex- And when's the new episode or new season come out? The 30th. Uh, yeah, 30th. <gasps> yes. Can't wait for that. We um, should have watch parties. We should. Yes. What date is, of the week do they come out usually? Do we know? Um, let's see. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. One of those days, probably. But yeah, that show is so dramatic and I am into it. So now I'm starting from season one of that. I also continued watching Below Deck, working my way backwards. I do that a lot with shows for some reason. Um, Wait, what was the second one you said? Below Deck. No, the other show that you're on the first episode. Oh, I'm on the first season of Vanderpump. Oh, oh, okay. Because I watched the most recent and then I'm starting from the beginning now. Okay. Um. Scandaval, man, that shit is whack. I'm not there yet. I started from the beginning last year. Okay. And I got to like season five. Um, and then I kind of just dropped off because I, 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 well, it's a lot. To it's a lot. To. Yeah. yeah. So I started the newest season, season 10. I was gonna say, yeah, just jump to yeah. that. And then That's what I've been saying, I think I'm gonna go back eventually, but like at this point, like the first few seasons are so spicy. It also aired in 2013. So like, put that into perspective to, to like the drama yes. and everything and it's, yeah. it's so nostalgic and it's so fucking funny um but yeah i'm, I'm really excited for this for this new season i can't wait for you like oh. how, where are you in this season um i am like three or four episodes in okay um it gets Sandoval, really good after like five okay i was gonna yeah. say they they just had the um the opening or not like the not the opening but like the family opening of the oh, tom's yeah. restaurant okay yeah yeah, yeah. Um, wait till they go to mexico yes, oh. yes are you guys caught up on salt lake city no uh, you need to actually you need to it's okay fucking spicy like, it's good really? yes Is they it? go back to jen shaw it's wait, really what? really good it's really like really in jail good. well something happens you need to watch it it's actually like up here on no 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 but something happened with oh. someone there to get jen where she's at oh my god i have to watch yeah because i watched like the first six uh episodes of this new season and then i like forgot yeah. about it a little bit you know it's really good though it's um, good that new chick's crazy monica yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh just you fu- you need to watch it because it's it has to do with monica so. okay okay yeah all right i'll add that to my list yeah but now i have a lot of show see you know me i don't do well with tons of shows now yeah. i got three shows i gotta freaking watch i was mm. proud of you you should be proud of me i almost this is so sad i almost started jersey show oh my god <laughs> and I'm i was proud like of you, you know what though no. Thank you. Uh, because yeah. you watch it every single year. At least twice a year. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? New year, not new me. Same show. New year, same show. <laughs> but no, I, I'm out of my comfort zone, ladies. Okay? That's good. No. challenge yourself. I started watching uh, 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 Sister Wives. Oh, yes. And it, mm, it's not my favorite show. I'm not going to lie. It's like juicy, but like not my favorite. It's like. I, I like the I like the spicy drama. I want bitches to throw down. I want Bad Girls Club. Yeah, I love Bad Girls. I Club. I never watched that, but oh. I heard it was wild. Oh, it's wild. It yeah. is. I wish I was. A I bad remember, girl. like that would come on. <laughs> you randomly. are a bad girl. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, once you get into a little bit more into Vanderpump, it's gonna get insane. I've I literally watched that season, like the this most recent season, like five times now. The. Oh, reunion episodes are insane those are my favorite episodes i love reunions. they're insane mm-hmm. <clears throat> my favorite quote to come out of the reunion which i won't <gasps> give any details as to like the background of my favorite quote to come out of it is james go fuck yourself with a fucking cheese grater you yes. fucking bitch who says that you have to watch and find out uh, okay there's this one i'm not sure when he says it but uh james kennedy he's like he's a crazy <laughs> ass <laughs> He's like, Tom, you're just, he's like, you're a mustache. You're a worm with a mustache. You're a worm with a mustache. He kept saying it like 50. How did you know that? Did you see like a club of it or something? Yeah. And also like James Kennedy is just like so quotable. He is very, yeah. He literally over and over and he's like, you're a fucking worm with a mustache. You're a worm with a mustache. It's <laughs> so funny. If you have no idea what we're talking about, then I'm sorry. But um, if you want something good to watch, 
watch okay. the latest episode of Vanderpump Rules. I'd it's be surprised. Quite juicy. Because I feel like we're late to the Vanderpump. Oh, party. we definitely are. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like most people know what this but, is. Yeah. Great reality TV, though. Did a lot of binging, um, a lot of napping. What, 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 hit me with your guy. Oh, you guys, did you watch The Golden Bachelor? Yes, I did. You no. didn't watch it? No. The Honestly, we- the wedding? <laughs> that's a no okay got it no no i have beef with the bachelor it's i it's not my cup of tea i don't like it it's so boring to me okay but it looked like a cute wedding it was a sweet wedding yeah very sweet it was very sweet uh gary made me cry because he's just a little baby boy gary but then i thought to myself remember his scandals that he had that we talked about remember he was like he like um was being accused of lying or whatever. Yeah, and then he was like, I don't have time for that. I'm happily to be here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that negativity is too much for me yeah. right now. Um, but yeah, Gary and Teresa got married on live TV on January 4th. It was beautiful. They had 150 guests. They had millions um, of guests. Do you see all the flowers true. and all the... Yes, that's oh what I kept thinking. Like, gosh. dude, that must have cost a fortune. Oh my, yeah. And then Flowers are so expensive. Does, Sending them to Italy, too. Does ABC pay for it? Oh, yeah. Well, they paid for this one because it was televised. Aired. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, it was officiated by uh, Susan, who was one of the contestants on The Golden Bachelor. That's interesting. It is. Hmm. Um, she's like a she officiates weddings. Um, like on the side. <laughs> yeah, it's like she. Oh, a, I do not know. It's good. Uh, what's the word? I can't think of the an aficionado. No, mm-hmm. that's, no that's not officiant. But an officiant is, is that, that what, what it is? Called? Yeah, but I thought the maybe a um, priest. Yeah, officiant's like not. Not religious. Not religious yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really cute. They had like a little bachelorette party for <laughs> Teresa, and all the ladies took like I don't know how to pronounce this. Boud- boudoir. boudoir, 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 boudoir. They did a boudoir shoot, so that was really cute. She looked very sexy. They all looked amazing. Good for them. It was like in honor of titties out. The way she came out of the limo very first because when she came out. She like pretended that she was naked. She had like a robe on, right? Yeah, and then she like opens it because it was her birthday her suit. Because it was her birthday. They had strippers. Mm-hmm. They had some Chippendales dancers. They were all over them. Mm-hmm. I bet they would. I bet they were. I would be too. I would be too. Actually, one of them is from um, Double Shot at Love. Remember that? Oh my! Like, you guys yeah. probably never watched that. No, I never watched. It was that. like a spinoff from Jersey Shore, kind of. Not really though. Um, so yeah, now they're happily married. They're going to Italy for their honeymoon and that's it. Best of luck to this Best of luck. married couple. They're beautiful together. They are. They're they're very adorable. Yep. Except for it made me sad because they kept saying things like like t- I'm talking about however much time we have left, oh, even I if it's just a few years I or whatever. That. I was like, Oh my god, stop. Don't man, don't bring that don't bring that energy in no. the world. Like, Teresa's like, we won't be around or something like that in like fifty years. Yeah. Or something like that. I was like, what the heck? And what is the thing you must always their thing they ended off with? Don't stop believing. Yep. That's their don't saying. Don't stop believing. Yeah, it was cute. But other than that, not much else to report. I, I think the new um bachelor starts soon though. Have they Actually, I probably will be skipping out. Yeah. I probably will not be watching because yeah. I don't care enough. Have they announced more the... important things? Yeah, they announced. I don't know who he is. Oh, no, dude. he's random. Is he a random? I think so. I think so. Let me. Is he golden? No. No. I'll keep watching golden. Bachelor. Yeah, I've watched golden again. Yeah. But the other ones, I'm just like, eh, whatever. Mm. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or less stress, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes at a price you'll actually like delivered right to your door. I've been using HelloFresh for a long time now, and let me tell you, I love it so freaking much. Tonight, I'm trying to decide between having lemony spaghetti with Brussels sprouts or one pot Mexicali black bean soup, okay? Both of those sound delicious, and every single week that I get HelloFresh, I am blown away by the quality of their ingredients. Their produce is so fresh. I've never received a rotten piece of produce. They're so easy to make. They're fun to make. The prep is so much easier than having to go to the grocery store. All of their ingredients are pre-portioned and it's cheaper than eating out. Don't let recipe boredom strike because HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and 
even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. And start the year off right with HelloFresh's wholesome health-forward options like over 30 calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. And they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Now that's worth waking up early for. So go to HelloFresh.com slash sesh free and use code sesh free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash sesh free with code sesh free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. What'd you guys do over break? Anything exciting? Um, my break was pretty, pretty mellow for the most part. I spent the holidays with my mom, my family, um, down south. Nice. Um, we made tamales, which, <gasps> okay, good. dude, I am so, I really wanted to share with you guys, but I got home and I thought my mom gave me enough to share because I was, because I mean, I busted my ass making these tamales. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she gave me three of each. <gasps> Rude. What? And I was like, wow, like I even told her, I was like, I want to share with people. I went to the, back to the house because I had to get going. And I just grabbed the bag that she told me was mine. I didn't check it before I left. Get home. And I'm like, mm, I'm going to have a tamale. I had three tamales. And I'm like, dang oh. it. I had, so I had six because I have three um, de rajas, which is basically just um, uh, chil- uh, cheese and jalapeno. And then the sweet ones were um, pineapple. And I've never had a tamale. Dude, really? Ever. Okay. I'm going to. Um, okay. It's embarrassing, honestly. It's a pain in the butt to make them. They're so, dude, they're so hard to make. Like, um. Okay. Needing the masa literally took us, and we did like shifts. Um, it literally took us like an hour because really? you're like you have to like knead and knead and knead and knead and knead, um, forever, forever and ever and ever. And what is it like a corn thing? Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's 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 a it's a corn. Um, it's masa I don't dough, know. kind of. Yes, so it's like a powder, and then you add like water and whatever gotcha. else to it. Okay. Um, I will say though, these were not vegetarian, um, because we used uh like the meat juice to... what's like traditionally in the meat meat yeah like yeah. pork pork yeah gotcha. but Red. they they technically weren't vegetarian because there was um beef broth in it yeah um i still ate them because i'm not gonna not eat do whatever them. you want and um, it's a damn free country damn free country that's right and and then i also made um vegan menudo which i now what is that that is a it's a it's a soup um, Ooh, it's a traditional like Mexican bomb. soup. Oh. Traditionally, it has um, it's like a red base, like chili base. Okay. Um, it has tripe, pig's feet, oh. um, hominy, mm-hmm. and I think that's it. Maybe there's another meat in there, um, but obviously, I'm not a big fan of any of that. Um, even before, like I didn't eat as much meat. Like I yeah. just wasn't a fan of it. Yeah. It so has I, a really distinct smell when it's cooking. Yes. And it's it's um yeah, I it's think a it very meaty <laughs> smell. So I made it with mushrooms. I used um snow mushrooms and um king oyster mushrooms. Mm, yum. And I'm the only one in my family that doesn't eat meat. Everyone mm-hmm. is very much a meat eater. Yeah. So I only made like a little bit. Gotcha. And it actually tasted really good. I'll have to make some again because that one was really easy to make and it was really fast. Menudo usually takes like all day to cook. Yeah. This literally took me like an hour. So mm, I will make stuff and bring it to you guys. I love soup. Yeah, yeah it's That's really, so really good. good. Um, but the tamales, I, I'm i sorry. I really wish I would have shared it's with okay. you guys. It's okay. It's okay. I would have eaten them all too. <laughs> They're Sounds hard. Good. Like, yeah. I feel like if you have them, it's hard not to eat them. No, it's true. Because you only, like at least like, Kind of, I think what you were saying, a, too, you only have it like once a year, too. Yeah. Kind of thing. I want to, okay, there's a recipe for vegan or uh, like vegetarian um, um, masa, mm-hmm. but I, and I want to try it, but it's just like, I don't know if I really trust it because you need um, the fat from, from the lard to like really, really like, you know, get the, get the dough yeah. to the right consistency. Yeah. Um, but I made that and my mom's husband was I like, He's very, he's very adventurous with food, which I love. Um, and like, I've showed him kombucha and like oh, cool. things that I drink and he loves the kombucha. Oh, cool. Like he's very like open. Yeah, that's cool. And so I was making the noodle and he's like, he's like, oh, he's like, interesting, like interesting. And I was like, yeah, I was like, I was like, please be honest. Like, what do you really think? And he's like, no, he's like, it's actually, he's like, it doesn't taste like menudo because it's, it's not. Yeah. But it has the same like texture. Sure. Um, because there's this mushroom. It's called snow mushroom. I'll put a picture of it and I'll put some a picture of what I made. Um, and it looks like tripe. It Interesting. literally looks like Dude, you can mushrooms are such a good versus meat alternative. Oh, they're so good. Like um oyster mushroom uh yeah, oyster mushrooms. Mm-hmm. 
you can cut those and use them as like um uh scallops yes mushrooms are the future huh. um the king oyster mushroom because those are like the big big ones mm-hmm. um it literally had like that it had like the porousness of meat yeah and like it was i don't know it just was it was really good um mm, it sounds so good yeah it Fuck, was really I'm good. hungry you know me too dude um, you know what i love enoki mushrooms those like long little skinny oh, they look I've like never, noodles i've never had them before how do you eat them you can just you can do it you can put them in soup you can like um saute them with sauce and stuff okay um but they're just like they don't really have much flavor so they kind of like absorb whatever flavor you're cooking them in but mm-hmm. it's the texture that's like so fun to Ooh. eat they're like kind of crunchy and they like kind of look Ooh. like noodles yeah i want to try that mm, that's good and then let's see after that um yeah my christmas was really it was pretty quiet it was really nice having you know some family time yeah um and then after that um i went to decadence this year nice it was fun um, Skrillex ran in, ring in the new year. Nice. We're back in 2014. Yeah, I was gonna say that's such a throwback. Yeah, no, it was fun. Um, it was fun. He obviously played nice sprites and ugly scary spirits and nice sprites. Yep. Scary spirits. <laughs> Dude, I used to. Sorry, I used to um bump that fucking song in high school like all the time. Mm-hmm. See, I was I was never really a Skrillex fan. And I like, liked Skrillex back in high school. And, like, I like him now. I mean, he still comes up with a lot of new music. Yeah. And whatever. And it was really great. Um, Subtronics. I love Dude, him. Dude, remember know. Flux Pavilion? Yes. yes. I remember. I, I love Ace of Flux Pavilion. Flux Pavilion. Yes. Um, but, yeah, that was fun. It was pretty low-key. Um, I just, I don't know. It's a fun time to get dressed up. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I think I got the Wook Flu. Um, the Wook Flu. Because I, it was really cold that night. And... Um, I scooted home from the venue. Um, because oh, no. oh, okay, a couple things. First, I ended up leaving a little bit early. Second, um, Ubers were just taking way oh, too I'm long. Sure, yeah, and I like don't live terribly far. Yeah, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna get home sooner if I just do this. Yeah, it was freezing. Like I oh, thought I, I was gonna lose my fingers when I dude. Got home. Um, yeah, that was. I'm fun. sure you didn't have like a jacket or anything either. <laughs> no, I had my patch. I literally was wearing a dress. And just like my pashmina. And that's literally it. Oh my, it. Oh my like, gosh. Wait, you walked all the way home? I scooted on a scooter. Oh, I, when you said scooted, I was like, you John sat ass. on your butt. My, yep, I scooted. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God. Nice. Yeah, that was nice. fun. And then um, watched a lot of TV. Took um, some naps. Took lots of naps. Um, did a lot, like, made a lot of earring stuff that I oh, have fun. yet to post, of course. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then. That's pretty Are you, Do you have any um, shows? No. What is like the... Markets? Markets. Do you have any markets lined up? Um, I haven't really looked, honestly. I've just been really busy. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to do First Friday next month um, oh, in great. the Santa Fe Art District. Oh, fun. They, yeah. My, I usually sit, um, go out there with my friend. I haven't done it in the last few months, um, but I might do that this in February because it's like Valentine's Day and I'll have like oh, yeah. a bunch of like... Uh, not Christmas, uh, Galentine, Valentine stuff. That'll be cute. Yeah, but I tried to like prioritize that during break. I didn't. I literally, I. It's okay. You gotta take a, a break. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I, I take a damn break. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, but I'm glad to be back. It's it's kind of nice to get back into a routine. Um, I feel like I was kind of going a little stir crazy. Yeah, I was routine. kind of like, okay, now what do I do? Yeah, a little bit. I went to bed so early most nights because I was like, I don't know what to do. I'll just go to bed. I'll oh, to I bed. literally went to bed so late. Really? Like, and then I was like sleeping in. This is embarrassing to like 11. Dude, me too. <laughs> like, I was sleeping in so late. Like, I got so much sleep. Like, I feel ugh. like I overslept like the yeah, entire break. Because now I'm like, I mean, I still could sleep that much, but I don't know. I'm like, I'm all messed up. Yeah. Really? Because I just, yeah, I got out of my. Your schedule, your habits. Yeah. And it was great, though. I felt, I was like, <laughs> You know, what was it? On Tuesday last week, I woke up and I was like, oh, wow, this is so, you know, don't have to work. And then I kept, I kept feeling that way. But then I started to get nervous. I was like, oh, God, two more days, one more day. And then I was in such a bad rut of, like, going to bed late, waking up late. Yeah. Having some beverages and not realizing. Just watching TV and having some drinks kicks you. Yeah, didn't you? Didn't Jared drunk. come home from work and, you, and he's like, what are you doing? Yep. And you're like, oh. It was so bad because Jared got home and he's like, 
And then I had like another one. But at that point, I was like stumbling over my words. Almost. Oh my God. <laughs> I went to bed early that night. Oh um, my God, that's funny. Passed out on the couch. but Just chilled. Yeah. Yeah. So I work is good for me because... You know, I know. Same. I'm like, I feel home. like I feel like I have no purpose if I'm not working. Totally. You know I, I mean? completely like, agree with that. I'm like, what am I? I I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm like, I can only clean my fucking house so many times. I was like, well, oh. I guess I'll clean my house. And then I'd like go and clean it. And then two days later, I'd be like, well, I guess I should clean my house. <laughs> again. Dude, that's so true. I felt that. So I feel that so hard because this during this break, I've never had my place cleaner than I've had it. Like, that's nice. It, no, it was so nice because I would wake nice. up. I'd be like, mm, what am I going to do today? Probably nothing. Let me just do the dishes and yeah. vacuum and pick up some things and I tried decluttering. I didn't. I added more. I brought more things in. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of thrifting over the break. Nice. Um, ooh, I want to show, oh, I'm going to show these boots. <laughs> They're so cute. Dude, I, I really love like them. Him. I got them at Goodwill the other day. Oh, really? They're Uggs. What? They're, yeah. Here, let me show They're them. They're Uggs? Yeah. They're Uggs. They literally have like no glasses tread. glasses on for this. They have no tread. Like they're brand spanking new. Oh my God. Those are, yeah, those are, I didn't know those were Uggs. They're Uggs. They're really cute. Like, they're brand new. Damn. How much they're were they? Cute. $15. Dude, that's so s- slay. 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 And they're so cute. And, like, I love the little, like, heel. heel? heel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I did a lot of thrifting. Nice. Um, I did catch up on, like, art stuff. And, like, I did a lot of, like, craft days by myself. Yeah. Which was fun. Um, nice. Yeah. Again, glad to be back, though. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm glad you all had a good break, but we're happy to be back. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to do, like I said, was talk about our ins and outs of the year. Um, And I want to hear what your guys' ins and outs are, so leave them in the comments. And yeah, it'll be a great little time. I think they could, you know, be a good inspiration for others as well. So um, I guess I'll start and then you guys can go. Um, I'll start with my ins. One of my biggest ins... For 2024 is moving my body more because I am very sedentary mm-hmm. a lot of the time. And I want to change that. And so I want to have some sort of physical activity, whether that's um like, you know, quote unquote working out, like traditional working out, or just going on a walk or doing yoga or doing uh fitness marshall because i did that i love fitness marshall it's fun i did that yesterday really <laughs> yeah it's fun and it's it's like gets oh. your heart rate up mm-hmm. i was sweating when i was doing it yeah yeah there's another one i need to show you too fin- uh, fin- or another channel another, another dancing channel like oh yeah, that. yeah send it to me yeah so that's kind of what i want to do john and i because john belongs to a gym um and i would love to go to a gym but i know myself so well i will never go to an actual gym like the thought of coming home from work and then going to a gym just sounds fucked. So yeah, <laughs> I give agree. people so yeah. major props who do that. But we've been looking on Marketplace to get like a treadmill or something just to because I just want to I was thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, the time you spend sitting on your ass scrolling TikTok and watching TV, you could be doing that just walking. That's yeah. true. And how I could just go downstairs, go on the treadmill for 30 minutes walk because eventually i'd like to start running as well my my parents are big runners um my dad's been running for like literally his whole life and he runs multiple times a week a week and it's so good for him and he loves it and i want to do that but i'm it keeps I, you young i hate it though like every time i've tried to be like i'm, I'm gonna become a runner I, i'll do it for like two months and I, it never gets better people are like oh you have to get your stamina up and it gets better and then you get the runner's high that has never happened to me. Like, I've never experienced a runner's high in my life. I've experienced a runner's die. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll um, high and then I'll go running. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get high and then, high, then I'll go running. Yeah. But, but yeah. I would love to be able to get my stamina up. I had to tell you guys this really quick. I signed up for the 5K again. <gasps> when is it? it? Next month. So We can train with you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, for oh you, my God. Said, I yeah. did it like in the later in the evening, and I was like, I'm just gonna sign up. So good for you. I know, but I'm terrified because I didn't like train last time. Yeah, and you still did it. Yeah, yeah, but I was in so much pain. Like afterwards, getting through the airport, I could, don't think I could have done it without Jared's help. <laughs> and I don't think he's coming this year. So. Oh no. Yeah, we'll see. I should have throw that out there. Good for you. That's awesome. 
But yeah, that's one of my big ones. My other one is drinking more water. This, some of this is like so like duh, not unique at all. But I need to drink more water just in general because sometimes I'm really bad at that. Um, my third one is not judging, which I I do think overall I like to think at least that I'm a pretty non judgmental person. Um, but I feel like you could always be better at that. And I want to work on not judging myself and not judging like others for whatever they're doing or what they're not doing or whatever. So that's just something I want to continue to work on. Um, and then my other thing that I really want to start doing is um, doing more like mindfulness. So whether that be in meditation or just being more mindful throughout the day, manifestation, all that type of stuff I would like to work on. I used to be really good at that and I fell off hard and I feel like when I was doing that, especially when I was like meditating and stuff, it was so good for me. Um, so I'd like to get back into that. Um, I want to keep my car clean. <laughs> you guys don't know this about me, but I, my car is typically a complete disaster. There is shit all over the place. Relatable. Literal human shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but there's also like relatable. trash. Every- <laughs> shit in my driver's seat. Yeah, yeah, shit. I just in my seat. car, yeah. yeah. Charlie shits on it. It's fine. No, but there's like trash everywhere. Like I'll go to a drive through and I just throw the trash on the ground. Like not food, but like straw Bags. wrappers and napkins and like receipts. random receipt receipts. Yeah. And like <laughs> if I bring a sweatshirt and it ends up in my car smell, it'll stay in my car for six months. Like, yes. Yep. So I just want to try and keep my car clean because it's very annoying. Um, let's see. I want to incorporate eating more healthy foods. This doesn't necessarily mean taking away non-healthy foods, but just adding more foods that are healthy. Um, eating more veggies and stuff. Um, what else? I would like to... Um, go skiing like five times this year just because I have a pass and I want to make sure I use it. Um, and I have a few other ones on here, but like, I mean, I don't need to share them all. But the other one, my last one is, which well, is kind of a big one, but figure out what to do about my wedding. <laughs> whether, yes. that's, whether that's have one or not. And then I need to make that. This is John and I. But, like, make the decision of what we're doing and then actually plan it, whatever that means. Um, That's a good one. Yes, I will help you. It sounds like the hardest thing. I don't know why. Like, I go back and, forth, back and forth so much. I'm like, yep, we're going to do this. And then I'm like, eh, maybe we won't. And I'm like, oh, maybe we should do this. I'm like, eh, maybe we won't. So I know that I want to be married, though, by, like, next year. And you have to plan this shit so far if you do some type of wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still looking at going elope, uh, destination. Oh, mm. would you elope? Yes, I thought about that too. Okay, and I'm like, maybe I should just go get married. Mm-hmm. Then I was watching Vanderpump Rules, and I was watching this one part of this this episode where this woman gets married. It's the Mexico part. Yes, mm-hmm. but anyway, she ends up being married for like a year already, and I was like, oh my god, Lala? I should do that. Uh, no, no she, Sheena. 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 Oh, oh Sheena. she got divorced. Yeah, she... Oh my god, yeah, you don't even know. Yeah. Oh, so she, from, she's with from Shay. No, bro. Oh. oh, she's with a new guy. Yeah, ah! you'll see. You'll see. You'll oh see. my god. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, last one of the last things that I remember watching before I stopped watching was Shay's wedding. Or sorry, Sheena's wedding with Shay. Oh, they. Oh, they had them. Yeah. Well, you'll see. Here are my outs now. I, so there's not as many, um, but some of them are. Boredom eating. Sometimes, especially when I'm here, I feel like we all do this. I'll get Mm -hmm. bored and I'll literally just go to the pantry and pick out some fucking crap and just... Munch on it. Like, munch on it for literally... I'm not even hungry. I'm literally just bored. And I feel like that's just not... Again, going with the whole mindfulness thing. I feel like that's not very mindful and intentional. I'm just like... which I mean, don't get me wrong. No no judgment for people who, like, snack because I'm, like, the biggest snacker and you do whatever you want. This is just my personal thing. I'm not judging anyone else who's doing whatever they're doing but that's kind of my personal thing that i would like to work on doom scrolling this is a big one yeah (laughs) doom motherfucking scrolling guys Mm -hmm. i have such a bad habit 
of being on my phone and scrolling just to scroll. Like it doesn't even, it's not even like fun for me. I'm just doing it because I'm fully addicted to it. And I'll do it anytime that I have an extra second. If I'm microwaving something and it's like two minutes, I will get on my phone and scroll for those two minutes. Like I can't bear to be without stimulation at all. And that's not great. That is not what I want to be doing. So I would really like to try to get the fuck off my phone um, at least as much as I can. So that it stays charged to the end of the day because when we doesn't die at noon. Right. And if I get off my phone, I can get on Peacock and watch more TV. <laughs> yes. so, I'll be replacing the doom scrolling with reality TV. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, more. I just it's it's bad. I'm addicted to my phone. Um, ghosting text messages. I am so bad at this. I will ghost people for days and I'll reply in my head and mm-hmm. then I just won't reply or I'll read it and be like, oh, okay, I need to reply to this at some point. And then I won't reply and then it'll be days. And then I, in my head, I'm like, it's too late to reply now. You can't reply mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So then I'll just never reply. And then I feel guilty about it for months. So I need to try to stop ghosting people on text messages. I, my friend, my friends will text me something and I just won't reply. And then someone will be like, um, hello. And I'm like, oh, hi, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. My other one is what ifing forever. I play the what if game with myself 24 seven of like playing out scenarios in my head of things I have literally no control over or, or convincing myself something bad will happen when there is no reason to think that that bad thing will happen. But in my head, I convince myself it will. And I just play the what if game forever and it drives me insane. So I would like to work on again, being more mindful of like, yeah, that could happen, but like obsessing over it and playing the what if game is not, going to make it less likely or more likely to happen so what are you doing which i know is gonna be really hard because i've done it my whole life but you can always you know work on it and then my last thing is um comparison of like comparing myself to other people comparing myself to people that i know in my life comparing myself to people on social media especially they're doing this why am i not doing this well i'm doing this and why aren't they doing this like they're they're at this stage in their life. Why am I not? Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are good. Those are really good. But we'll see. You know, change is hard. You got to, like, put in the hard work in order to get the results. So, one day at a time. Oh, hi, chicken. You're so handsome. One day at a time. And, um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Mine are, I mean, I don't have that many there's a lot of the same ones that you said. Yeah, I feel like so many people have yeah. similar ones. Um, so starting with my ins, first one is like, it's really been driving me insane that I, I haven't done this. But just being more intentional with like all of my relationships, making that like the effort to make plans or to like follow through with plans or, you know, not just hiding out in my house type yeah thing. totally and then saving money is big just you know just in general i guess mm-hmm. and then i really want to get out of my house more like being active like you kind of like you said like moving my body you know not being so like sudden what's the word sedentary yes but that's pretty much for like my ends i like those those are good my outs, first one is impulse buying is mm-hmm. online shopping is a major issue that I have. And I do it while I'm like up late. Yeah. And then I sometimes I like forget about it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh crap, why did I do that? And then also my next one would be staying up late. So getting to bed earlier. Fair. So, yep. That's More discipline. Good. More discipline. Yeah. More structure. structure. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think those are good. Yeah. Good job, Sid. What about you, Kay? Let's see. Um, I would say like my one of my biggest ones would be living with intention in general. Like Sydney said, just like having more just, you know, being intentional in my decisions and my relationships and being just intentional in general, like not just doing things for the fuck of it. Mm-hmm. Um, investing in quality versus quantity. Oh, that's a good one. Um, just because, I mean, quality will always take you further than quantity. Sure. Relationships. Fit, like material items, like yes. overall just quality versus quantity. Sorry, these are my ins, by the way. Um, <clears throat> another one is being self-aware, just self-awareness in general and like 
knowing when knowing when I am being too much or knowing when I need to like just dial it back or dial it more you know what I mean just like having that self-awareness uh-huh. um I like that saying no is a big one for me um which it'll tie into one of my outs later but just again just having that like self-discipline of if I can't commit to something say no and that's okay sure. yeah um mocktails mocktails mm, fun because I I like I mean of course like I enjoy drinking but sometimes it's like not even like about the drink it's just about like having having it, it you know what I mean yeah, no mm-hmm. I that's I completely get it and so like this last weekend <laughs> I I had a friend over for dinner and we made um they, it was in my like wine glasses and it was cherry juice and sparkling water and it gave us the same effect yes. of wine yes yeah and it was really fun and like it was like it, it's good for you yeah. it's it's you know so that that's one of my big drinking ends. a fun drink is like the only thing like when i get home from work i don't care about having a drink mm-hmm. like an alcohol drink i just want to have like a fun drink Something to yeah. Drink, yeah i usually because i only drink on the weekends i usually will um take a poppy like oh those uh-huh. are like probiotic prebiotic. yeah soda things or olipops and i'll uh just like pour it over glass in a f- nice like wine glass and yeah. it gives the same effect it is no it really does reading versus scrolling reading instead of scrolling Ooh, that's um, a good one just because again doom scrolling is is out for the year <laughs> um lentils lentils are so good for you <laughs> that's so random i love it <laughs> just they're they so, are they're so, they're they so have, good for they, you they have, they're so high in fiber they're just good for you all around they're pretty low in calories yeah. they're really really good for you yes um mm-hmm. so i'm trying to incorporate lentils okay. more in my diet Slee. um let's see honestly probably my biggest one is planners but not making them aesthetic so oh. I love, like, I'm I'm very much like a pen and paper kind of person, mm-hmm. and I love having like a physical planner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I get discouraged because I do- I can't always make it look how I want. But that's not the point of a planner, right? You know what I mean? Totally. Like, make it messy. It's it uh, like honestly, just like make if it helps me. If it's gonna help me, it's gonna help me. Yes. I just stop. I need to stop like being so hung up on it being pretty. You know what I mean? That's such a thing, dude. I used to do that too especially oh. in college yeah you know have you ever heard of the Erin condren planners oh yeah yes they're yes. like and then people would have like little tape and like little like they would the make tabs a and full like i have collage. my planner like and i was really proud of that yeah, yeah. Like, but i was like obsessed with it and then i would same. feel like shit if you, i didn't because it takes a lot of time too mm-hmm. to like go in it takes like hours with your little stickers and your shit and it's like then i would get sad when you don't do it one day and then yes it gets, yeah and it's like yeah, I mean, if you can, that's great. Right. But if you can't, it's not the end of the world. And yeah. this is more so for myself because, like, I'm kind of, like, I'm not, like, a, I'm not, I don't know. I'm just kind of weird about my planners. And, like, if they don't, like, in, back in college, I would rewrite my notes if I didn't have a pen that I had, that I needed. Mm. Or if I, like, if I was missing, like, a color or whatever, I'd have to go back and rewrite my entire notes. Oh, and that would yeah. take me so long. And yeah. most of the times, I wouldn't even, like, finish my notes. Sure. You know what I mean? Yep. Or, like, I'd, like in class i would like stop because not stop but like i wouldn't write as much because i didn't have like that certain pen or color or whatever yeah yeah those are my ins my outs overlapping plans and agreeing to more than i can provide to make people happy because no one's happy mm, that's a good one um and this is just like over you know like over um over promising or like just over-booking. You know I mean? like overbooking myself sure men <laughs> almost all of them (laughs) (laughs) that's amazing um rotting in bed to avoid my obligations um i think rotting in bed is fine i do that's yeah Yeah. to an extent it can be good for you yes but then it can also be like a crutch it is and that's what i like i'm trying to like avoid as much as just i can rot in bed but i can't rot to avoid things that i need to do totally imposter syndrome oh i suffer with i I think a lot of us do yes Um, major yes and struggling with that really bad the last like few months yeah and i think can you explain that it's the idea of like convincing yourself that you're an imposter at some so like for example at your job thinking oh, like oh i don't yes. actually know how to do this like, I'm, I'm not faking qualified. it yeah i'm not qualified for this i'm I'm faking it and eventually they're gonna find out i'm faking it yes. and i'm gonna be exposed as like a fraud Ugh. or an imposter i so feel that sometimes yeah and i feel that with like uh, almost like every aspect of my life um Ugh, and it that. sucks but trying to work on that this year totally and then my last one is self-deprivation and self-sabotage um because i (laughs) the way i grew up like if nothing is nothing bad is happening for a long period of time i'm like 
whoa, like why is why is it why is it so good? Like yes. this this cookie is about to crumble. Like what like when yeah. is it coming? I feel like that leads to self sabotage for me. Mm. Like it's I can't just be content in the good. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, and self deprivation, just like talking bad about yourself and you know, um, you know, calling myself ugly names or yeah, you know what I mean. And I think that. I mean, we literally talk about it here all the time. Like, we do it a lot, too. Oh, we do. Um, mm-hmm. And it's... Dude, we do it a lot at work, too, because I think we, like, all think it's funny. Yeah. And it is to an extent... Like, it's kind of funny, like, when you... But then it's, like, not, not that funny. we're saying it to each other. No, no, no. Right. no. We're, 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 we're not saying no, no, no. it about ourselves. We're saying right, it about right. ourselves, but then we're all be like, yeah, and yeah. Like, we're not... We're yeah. not mean to each other, but we're, no. like, mean to ourselves, but yes. then we, like, laugh about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, just, like, that self that negative self-talk. Yeah. I mean, it manifests. You know what I mean? Like, it totally does. You, you, yes. you, we say it enough times or I, like, I, I'm saying we, but like, I'm talking about myself. I say it enough times that I start believing, believing those it. things. Yeah. Or making it true. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. almost living in the negativity. Yes. Yeah. You know? No, oh, it's so I'm true. I'm so guilty of that. But yeah. And I think also, um, the, I think society, but particularly like millennials and Gen Z think it's like, funny to self-sabotage mm-hmm. like it's like a quirky thing like oh i'm just yeah such an whatever and like talking shit about yourself but it's like you cope with it through anxiety but it's like clearly there's feelings there that's creating you to say that to begin with mm-hmm. and even though you're like making a joke out of it like there is truth behind what you're or you think there's truth behind what you're saying mm-hmm. um yeah the other day <laughs> The other day I said something bad about myself. My friend literally was like, no, you're not. And she's like, why? Why would you say she's that? She's like, why are you saying that? I'm like, oh, I have a problem of calling myself stupid a lot. I'm like, God, I'm so stupid. Or, oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm an mm-hmm. idiot. I didn't think. And I've even seen comments. People be like, dude, why do you say that about yourself? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. No, but I- then if you called yourself stupid, I'd be like, no, you're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. Like, it's it's easy to self-deprecate. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, it's, it's, yeah. It's and it's quirky and it's but, yeah, but it's, it's, it's like not, not though <laughs> it's really not yeah no, those are good ones Kay yeah thank you well yeah let us know what yours are in the comments below um and yeah I think we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break and then we'll be back with some topics over winter break I did a lot of rotting in bed but thanks to Lumi, I did not smell like I was rotting in bed. I smelled delicious. Lumi is a game-changing whole body deodorant designed by an OBGYN to work not only on pits, but also feet, privates, and everywhere else we get odor. No matter where you use it, Lumi is clinically proven to block odor all day long, all thanks to its one-of-a-kind pH-optimized formula. And they've got over 275,000 five-star reviews to show for it. And Lumi is clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. So when you're rotting in bed all weekend, don't worry, you still will smell delicious thanks to Lumi. Unlike certain deodorants that try and mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it even starts. So it's more like a pre-odorant. Their products are baking soda free and paraben free and they're pH balanced for safe use below the belt. And Lumi is clinically proven to control odor better than a shower with soap alone. 12 hours after a shower, the average person has an odor level of six out of 10, but with Lumi, the average odor level is zero out of 10. Lumi is the best deodorant I have ever used. I am not just saying that. I love all of their products, not just their stick deodorant, but their body deodorant. Their body wash is so good. I love it. And I really just cannot say enough good things about Lumi. You need to try them out. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SESH at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code SESH. Okay, so for our next segment, Krelly is going to be joining us because whenever I film episodes without Kendall, um, you guys always talk about how you wish that they would come down and sit with me. So we're Krelly, that today. Yeah. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Have you ever sat here before? Never. It feels really weird. Does it? Um, yeah, I don't like where do I look? Um, you can look anywhere. Yeah, it's really weird seeing me like this and with so many lights. The lights um, are. They're jarring. They're jarring. Dude, the lights make me yawn really bad. Yeah. And I feel bad because sometimes in the episode, I'll literally have to yawn and I'm not tired or bored. I 
for some reason, these bright lights just like trigger no. this yawning sensation at me. And I'm trying like not to look directly into the light because I'm like <laughs> looking up and I'm like looking directly yes. into the light. Well, that one, the ring light's really bright. See, the the ones that really get me are the two on the side with the little dots. Yeah, uh, yeah. I know, but they're a pain. Yeah, no, this is this is different. People are always like, "God, your eyes' skin looks so good." I'm like it's the lighting it's but no it is the lighting thank you thanks it's the lighting okay um first topic to go over with crelly we're titling this the stanley cup craze and crelly is i have modeling my, my stanley cup um i got it last year from kendall for my birthday beautiful do you love it um it, she's good she's fine um i do Ooh. like my other stanley better the one with the handle um because huh? i handle well oh like the, the thing on top yeah, the thing with the straw I, yep i don't know what it's called i forgot what it's called they're like more of the hydro flask looking thing. like the one yes. sydney has said show yours hers is a hydro flask though right yes. yeah that's a hydro flask but that's the like the stanley that i like uh-huh. um this is also like the old stanley um so it doesn't have like any of the cool little like the new things like it doesn't have like the padding Whoa. here um my straw leaks a lot or like Whoa. if i tip it over like it's definitely gonna leak it's a leaker it's a leaker she's leaky yeah um here she is well unfortunately we don't have our resident stanley stan here who is kendall because if you all know kendall stands is stanley she's got a whole collection of them yeah um but we still want to talk about this anyway because this is (laughs) it's actually really crazy it's actually really crazy this is such an american the fact that people are going crazy over a cup a cup a water receptacle a cup yeah yeah this is wild john actually told me this a few days ago the company has been around for over 100 years. This isn't, they're not new. No. And not people, I think, don't know that or didn't maybe at first or something, but like they've been around for a long time. They've seen a $676 million increase in revenue from 2019 to 2023. That's insane. Because of those cups. Because of these cups. And like their other, their like their other cup is like a thermos. Oh. So like that's like their like flat, that was like their flag. Oh. Their, their res, their flag. Sh- no. Their, what's that word? The, yeah, that one. The one that made them famous. The one yes. that they're well known for. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what the, the term is. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's uh wild. They had a two hundred, two hundred, a two hundred, a two hundred seventy five percent increase in sales. Um, in the quen- is this a quencher? Yes. That's okay, in the cup quencher. alone, just in 2022. Okay, quick question, really fast. Yes, ma'am. So those styles of cups, yes, have because stanley's been around for so long but it was just it was the cup that they decided to come out with like a handheld cup yes the 40 ounce quencher came out in 2016 um but it didn't like gain but, traction no not for a long time probably not until like 2020 2019 yeah is like when they started going crazy yeah also don't look at my straw she nasty oh your straw yeah. no i don't judge. they look like the bubba okay. cups there's like these cups called oh, bubba, bubba cups. I have and, one. Yeah, yeah i used to have one of them in, one of them one of those in college but those i don't know I'm not sure what the big hype is. Honestly, You're... I'm not going to lie. I only use it because I have it, but I would not buy. Oh. I bought one for my mom for Christmas just as like as a gift. Yeah. Because she wanted it for work or she wanted a cup for work. And I was like, mm, the Stanley Cup. Um, but I wouldn't buy this. Tea. It's they're like 50 bucks. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah. And they're heavy. And like, honestly, they're just like, they're just so heavy. It's like not even, it's like less than halfway full. I, uh had a knockoff one on from amazon for a little bit and then i left it at the mall one day and i, don't know, I never bought another one i was wondering where it was yeah yeah she <laughs> i went to the apple store to get my computer fixed and then i came back and i was like where the fuck did it go i think it's at the apple store <laughs> so rest in peace to her yeah anyways it's wild though so people are obviously popping off now also i'm sure most people are aware of what water talk is and that's a big reason why they gained so much yes. traction was yeah. because of water talk. Water talk. I found myself on water talk a few months back. It's basically this side of TikTok where people will fill their cups. Most of the time it's Stanley. Sometimes people have other brands too with, you guessed it, water. And then they um, will use like tons of different flavor, like Skittles flavor packets and like like candy flavor. They basically make like candy flavored water. Mm-hmm. And these syrups, like the coffee mm-hmm. syrup, like the simple syrups, simple, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, um, to make like different 
water concoctions and i think it's supposed to like help with your water intake um i have an issue with that though because it's like i mean yes there's zero sugar and yes but but yeah, like so all the there's no calories and sugar in it so right say it's like, but it's all artificial sweeteners yeah so it's like it's you're it's not like you're drinking water i think the overall thing is like if you like yeah, it's probably not as good for you as drinking regular water, but you wouldn't have drank in that amount of water without those. I see. I guess. I don't know. Or you know what? Just cl- cl- clip your nose, clip drink your some nose. water, and just, you know, do that like three times a day. Clip your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I don't know, because I, I know some people get like, like grossed out by water. You know what I mean? Oh, like, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so it's like, I, I feel don't like, I don't get grossed out. Sometimes I get bored. I have, um, I love like water. crystallized lemon that I put in my water. Like those like simply lemon. Sim- those are great. I think they're just like cr- literally crystallized lemon. They have like lime it's and shit. It's dehydrated lemon. Yeah. And it's, uh, that's actually really, really good. Cause I used to use, I, I've drank water or lemon in my water forever. I used to just buy like big bags of lemons and then squeeze them in my water. It's called which sometimes I'll still do, but true lemon, true lemon. Yeah. That's what I use. Um, but anyways, I mean, the cups have gone absolutely viral. Also, I think it's because of TikTok. Like oh, everything yeah. that goes viral, I feel like originates from TikTok. 100%. Okay. So this is another reason <laughs> this was wild that these are so popular is because there was actually a video of this car that was on fire and like was burnt to shit. <laughs> and the Stanley cup inside of it still had ice in it. And it it had was completely fine. Like completely fine. Yeah, okay, let's watch the video of that. There's ice in it. Fire yesterday still has ice in it. Do you think that's real? I think it is. Or do you think oh, it like, yeah. burnt in the car? And then after after that video, it, it went viral, and Stanley um, bought them a new car. Oh, shit. Yeah, we don't know what yeah. it. it just happened. And this is the car. After the fire department left. Well, that's so watch. scary. Yeah, love to talk about. We were at the junkyard the next Damn. day trying to get stuff out of the car. I went to go pull the Stanley out of the cup holder and noticed it still had ice in it. Everybody's so concerned about if the Stanley... That's so scary. But what about the milk? It's on fire yesterday. It still has ice in it. You hear that? Stanley really be doing the most. So, okay. So I'm going to set my car on fire. <laughs> put my Stanley in there. Test it. And test it. We need to do some stress tests. We need it. Yeah, we need a stress test. Throw that bitch in the toaster oven in the kitchen (laughs) and see see if it survives. I think she will. Get a flame torch. Um, Anyways, okay, so the real reason, though, that we're talking about this is because recently people have been going absolutely fucking feral for the new limited edition cups at Target. They came out with a Galentine collection. Um, They were available in pink and red. And the demand was so high that they sold out almost immediately online and in stores. Some waited up to six hours in line to get a cup. Crazy. So people showed up at like five, like three in the morning, like one in the morning, three in the morning to stand in line for a to cup. stand in line at Target for a cup for us for a cup. Now I just said I'm going to stop being judgmental. So I'm judging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I feel like I can. I have st- I have Stanley privileges. So you can judge Mm because you have Stanley, but you're like part of the, the. So that's why I can judge, is because I'm part of the clan, so I can judge. Hmm. The Stanley clan. Okay. Yeah. Let's watch a little um, video of the crowd rushing. This is like it's giving (laughs) toilet paper back when COVID started. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Her cup. They're not even that cute. No offense to these colors. They're red and pink. There's nothing that exciting about them. They can only get super guessed. <laughs> Are they all out? Less than four minutes. <laughs> um, people were even fighting, literally brawling, to get their hands on these damn cups. People were getting arrested. Citizens arrest. Okay, still. <laughs> you guys, this is insane. Look at this dupe, stupid. Get him, get him. Stop him, stop him, stop him. <laughs> He's trying stop to steal him. a cup. Yeah, He's, yeah he has a box of cups. I didn't touch him. I didn't touch him. Stop him. Stop her. Stop her. Somebody, she tried to grab my bag, you guys. Look at this is insane. Look at this. He is They're insane. On TikTok live. Look at this. Yeah. She still has it in his hand, though. Good. No, 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 no. It's 
He stole it. Wow, you guys. Look at that. Dude. Was that not insane? Be aware. Be aware. <laughs> Be aware. He just stole that cup. Be aware. Beat up security. Keep an eye out for the Stanley Steeler. <laughs> it's become such a like. It's all about the brand. Like, right. I feel like if you have a knockoff, you're a loser. That's how you felt, huh? Huh. My freaking Amazon gun. <laughs> Simply home or whatever it was called. I don't know. Simply not Stanley. Simply not Stanley. <laughs> I liked my cup. It was fine. It's kind of it was bulky cute. though. Oh, dude, these are so bulky. Honestly, dude, those are more way bulky. too much, dude. Like honestly, is it been your cup holder? Yes, that's good at least. And that is the one. That is the main selling point about these cups is they will fit in your cup holder. Hydro flask doesn't. Uh, oh my yeah, god, does. rude. Ooh. Mine fits in my cup holder and i got a fat one <laughs> if it's in your cup holder yeah and i can drink it up at night like when i'm laying yeah, in bed tell them about how you drink it like a baby oh yeah so <laughs> i get really thirsty in the middle of the night and so i usually have this like right by my head and there's been times where i literally have hit my head on it and i'm like <sighs> dude but yeah it's like my baby bottle of she water drinks it while she's laying down sleeping I, mm -hmm. that's what i do with my other one with my other stanley i literally have it like i hold it like i i hold it sometimes oh yeah it's like an like emotional it, support water bottle it is exactly that i understand the emotional support water bottle where's yours your white one uh it's in my house i just <laughs> have to clean it and i got lazy and it's just been sitting there <laughs> i don't know yeah i need to get it back out but no, it's crazy how these cups have become like a symbol for like classism. You know what I mean? Like, no, they really have. Like, it's like if you don't have one, then what are you doing? No, like, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Either you have a Stanley or you're a knockoff loser bitch. Yeah. It's like it's... having Ugg boots or having bear claws. Fucking cringe. I like, think I'm Hydro... I have bear claws on my feet right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have Uggs on my feet. Ooh, and you have a Stanley. Oh my God. Crelly. Oh wow. I'm, I'm the 1%. You need a juicy pair of juicy sweatpants. Dude, the juicy sweatpants. The juicy yes. suits are those coming back, or did those already have like their resurgence? I think they're and... back. Yeah, I think so. I think they're. I think they already came back. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do a whole tracksuit, honestly. Ew, I, I feel like I would. I feel like I would actually look like a like a like a sausage. Remember what we just talked about? I know, but like I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a pink juicy sweatsuit, velour, and I used to wear it with my Uggs in high school. Oh hell yeah! And like kind of like. The pants would be kind of in and out, yes. and then yeah. I thought it was so cool that when I went to college, I would wear the matching sweatsuit. It was bright pink, and I you could not miss so it. So embarrassed that I would thought that was so cool. Like I was a, oh sticking like a sore thumb. But you, uh, you probably looked so cute though. Yeah, you probably did. I never did no. you say juicy on the butt. Um, yes, and on the back. Okay, that's one thing too. Is my butt's not juicy enough. To, to have like juicy on it. And it had a J. That's how you know the real. It's a J. Like, yeah, there's J zipper. Yeah. Because I had a knockoff uh, juicy thing from like Walmart or something. So my parents were like, we're not, that is a joke. We're not buying you that. <laughs> and I would try and wear it, but people would be like, it's not real. Your zipper's fake. I did have real Uggs though. So I've, this, I've so, never had a pair of Uggs. Big flex. So. What yeah. do you do? No, I do. I got for $15. Dude, the, have you seen the whole Ugg thing though? No. There's like this whole scandal now. Huh. On TikTok or just in general, where UGG uh, is like bullshit now. And everyone's like complaining about how they're terrible quality. And mm. you have to get it from UGG Australia. Like there's like two different brands oh, that people yeah. don't know that. I wonder if it's like Doc Martens. Doc Martens has like their UK brand, which they come directly from the UK. And I think they're like hand built. Oh, and then they have like, shit. yeah, and then they have like their I've other got, ones. I've got American Doc Martens. Me too. Awkward. Mm. Yeah. I love them. Me too. They're cute. They're fun. Really cute. It's all about the fucking brands. Okay? Yeah, no, it's awful. Also, speaking of the brands and like classism, have you seen like all the kids, like the 10 year olds who are obsessed with fucking drunk elephant? Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. We need to talk about this. The face brand? Face yeah. Like, like, the, like, have you seen the, it's like Sephora kids. Yes. It's the Sephora kids. There's no what more are, Claire what kids. Are we, Sephora remember, like, kids. Remember when we were like 11, we would go to Claire's? Yeah. And like spend our money. Yeah. And like buy a little like pal palette, like make a palette of like phone or, cases yeah. and shit. Yeah. No, now it's kids that are like 11 going to Sephora and buying skincare, like retinol. What? Yes. Skincare. How do they afford that? That's uh, what I'm fucking saying. Like I had like 20 bucks to go to the mall. Like, right. Dude, same. You, drunk Elephant is like 
eighty dollars so for a, for a moisturizer. I've never tried drunk drunk elephant. I've yeah. heard it's not good for your skin. No, I've I've used like trial sizes and I'm I was never really impressed. No, it messed up my skin. I mean, my skin really dry. But yeah, these chicks will go into um, chicks. These children. Sorry, yeah, I don't know why I said <laughs> these children. They're literally like nine and ten, old, yes. eleven. They do not need to be using. They using go retinoid. into Sephora and they literally like will fight full-on adults for them yeah no i saw this one tiktok where like she was talking she's like i just got owned by a nine-year-old i think i saw the same one she's like she had two drunk elephant products in her hand and i asked her if i can have one and she said i will if you give me your gucci ring yes i saw that one <laughs> and i'm like dude these kids are like built different it's because their parents are it's not the Bitches, kids fault. I'm kidding. It's, no it's literally bad parenting yeah. 101 you no yeah are raising spoiled brat children and not only that but they go into the store oh yeah and they like completely destroy all of the display items. Oh yeah, look at um, that's insane. It's bad. Yeah, like the tester. Yes. Yeah, they literally will make drunk elephant smoothies. They call them where they, dude. My cousin put a bunch of daughter products together. Um, she was like asking her. She's like, oh, can I get the drunk elephant? Um, the this one, the polypeptide cream. And my cousin, she's like, I'm not. She's like, I'm not spending eighty dollars. She's like, I won't even spend eighty dollars on myself. So she's like, no, I'm not gonna get you. An eighty dollar fucking peptide cream. cream. You're eight years old. You don't need. You're. You have no wrinkles. Also, you shouldn't be using. Like a lot of this shit has uh, retinol in it. Yeah, and not until you like what? 20, you should in not your be, mid twenties. You should not be using retinol at when you're a kid because no. it can just dry your skin up and cause problems in the future. Yeah. So now, um, Stanley's reselling their cups for like a hundred dollars on resale. Hundred dollars. What do you mean on resale? Like. Stock third, X. like yeah like third party sites like people go buy them and then resell them you know people oh who like gosh. do that with shoes like they'll like buy a bunch of shoes and like they'll resell them on like, like concert stock. tickets yeah and, like when hand sanitizer was <laughs> being <laughs> was it yeah like it would cost so much money to buy it because people yeah. were oh, yeah people were like reselling it yeah for like yeah super inflated it's like 80 bucks one time yeah i was like what the um when i was researching this Vi- vice made an article where they're talking about like one um listing on StockX was made for twenty nine thousand dollars, but I went back and I I couldn't find it, and I I don't yeah I, I think somebody was just trying to like pull a fast one. Mm. Um, but yeah, the fact that these are literally being sold for like over a hundred dollars for a cup, and people are fighting, literally brawling, literally in Target for a cup. If this cup was magical, yeah, maybe if, if it if was it, what if it was magical, if it could turn my water to wine. I'd spend 50 bucks on it. You pour water in, you get margaritas out? Yeah. Sure. I would do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but they got some competition. Like Awala. Have you heard of that? I've I've thought about getting an Awala water oh, bottle. Oh, really? I've never mm-hmm. heard of them. It's like mm-hmm. another type of water bottle. Yeah. It has mm-hmm. a straw and you can sip. But they're like fun colors. Mm-hmm. They're like tri-colored. Oh. They're cute. Mm-hmm. Let me know. Would you go fight someone for a Stanley? I would honestly like to see it. I'd honestly be down to see it. Me too. I would love to see someone fight for a cup. Me too. I'd whip my phone out. It'd be hilarious. It's giving like it's giving like 2007 Black Friday deals at Walmart. All right. We're going to go ahead and switch places now. Sid's going to come up for the next story. Yep. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Crelly, for joining us. Thank you for having me. You were wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time. Respect. Respect back. Thank you. Yep. I have a confession to make. I am not a light packer. I overpack every single trip that I go on and it's just because I wanna make sure that I have everything you need. And with base, there's room for everything. 15 pairs of underwear for a weekend trip, no problem. I am definitely guilty of that. Deciding between a few pairs of shoes, bring them all with Base. Base was created by actress Shay Mitchell to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel effortlessly while still looking fashionable. And Base has thought of everything you could ever want in a piece of luggage. 360 degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, built-in weight indicator, which is so genius, washable bags for your dirty clothes, and all the interior pockets you need to keep organized. Their luggage comes in multiple sizes and colors, and for shorter trips, the Weekender bag is super functional and even has a place to store your shoes separately, which is so genius. You could also put your dirty clothes in there so you keep them separate from your clean clothes. You could put bathing suits in there. I love the Weekender bag. And every piece is made to look better with miles, so you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews for a reason. 
Whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security line, BASE has your personal items covered. They even have a travel bag for dogs. It's brilliant. They've got everything you could possibly need. And right now, BASE is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash sesh. Go to basetravel.com slash sesh for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash sesh. All right. So now we have Miss Sydney joining us. Welcome, Sydney. Hello. Hello. What's up? <laughs> Don't act too excited now. Is this your first time at the table? No, I actually have been up here <gasps> a little bit. Right. Maybe like two times. Okay. Well, yeah. welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having we me. have one um, last topic for this week, and it's an update from a story that we've been covering um, for a few months now. It's about the Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt ongoing case, the Eight Passengers vlog channel family. Little recap, back in September, Ruby and Jody were both charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse after Ruby's son escaped Jody's home and ran to a neighbor's house to ask for help. And he was found in very bad condition, um, had a lot of injuries. And it after that, it all came out that all of the children had been badly abused. Now, I, I don't want to say it all came out because people were speculating for a long time, especially just like, I mean, she, even her YouTube videos were very, very questionable. She oh, yeah. would take her kid's bed away. One of her sons didn't have a bed for months. Um, one of her youngest kids, who was like in first grade, didn't pack their own lunch and then had no lunch. Kindergarten. Call, can, oh, it was kindergarten? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So the teacher called the uh, Jody and was like, or Ruby, sorry, and was like, hey, your kid didn't have lunch today. Can you please bring a lunch? And she was like, no, like they should have learned to pack their own lunch. Um, so just bad things. Also, this one time, two of her kids were eating pineapples downstairs while watching TV while she was upstairs. And I guess she told them, like, do not eat any snacks while I'm, you know, while she's I'm like upstairs. taking a nap or something. Yeah, she's taking a nap. And the kids were hungry. So they got themselves a snack and they had pineapple juice. Um, spilled on the ground and it was sticky and she apparently like freaked out after that and just yeah it, she's been doing horrible things to her kids for a long time but it's really been exposed at just how horrific it is which by the way we are going to talk about it so if that's triggering to you i'd probably just go ahead and skip or um come back you know next week but we still wanted to update it because it is ongoing and obviously we have been talking about it so um Ruby's court hearing was on December 18th and Jody's was on December 27th and both pled guilty to four of the six charges of aggravated child abuse and both are scheduled for sentencing on February 20th. So Ruby pled guilty to four second degree felony counts of aggravated child abuse. She was originally charged with six, but two were dropped as part of a plea deal, which also included that she would testify against Jody. Now, if you don't know who Jody is, Jody is her business partner, yeah. she claims. Mentor. Kind Mentor, of thing. yeah. Mm-hmm. Jody had this like program where she would sell people courses having to do with like parenting your child and how to get a child who respects you and whatever. Yeah. And Frankie was kind of, yeah, you like she, she looked at Jody as kind of her mentor and business partner. And then they had a YouTube channel where mm-hmm. they were like doing it together. Yes. Yeah. Connections. connections. Yeah, connections. And Jody is actually a, well, was a um, licensed counselor. Mm-hmm. So that's really concerning and sick. Um, but anyways, back to this court date. Um, in the agreement, Ruby admitted that, quote, she intentionally or knowingly helped inflict serious physical injuries on her two youngest children from May 22nd to August 30th. And Ruby's daughter was nine years old when the abuse started and her son was 11. The plea agreement described the physical torture against both of the children. This is so fucked, but Ruby was um, forcing her son's head underwater. Um, She also suffocated him with her hands and kicked him while wearing boots. And there's a direct quote from the agreement saying, after Ruby's son tried to run away in July, his hands and feet were regularly bound, sometimes with handcuffs. And at times ropes were used to tie together handcuffs that secured his hands and feet as he lay on his stomach, lifting his arms and legs off of the ground and injuring his wrists and ankles. When the handcuffs cut into his skin and injured his hands and wrist, those injuries were treated with homeopathic remedies and covered with duct tape and the bindings were replaced 
um, on top of the duct tape. So put back on. And also she would treat some of her kids' wounds with like cayenne pepper. Yeah, that, that was yeah. the homeopathic remedy was right. cayenne pepper and honey. honey. The agreement also included um, that the two children were isolated from others, forced to do physical tasks, forced to stay outside, and they were denied, denied food and water. Um, the children were also told that they are evil and possessed and that their punishments were necessary for them to repent. And they believe that. Like, of it's, course. It's many articles, like the children truly, like the, especially the daughter. It's, I mean, when you're that young and your parents are telling you this, like I would probably believe it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then she did say she did, she did these things. Like she told the kids, I'm doing this out of love. Right. That was always what it was. It was like, this is for your own good. This is to teach you a lesson. This is because we love you. This is because we want you to be better. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> um, Ruby admitted to similarly physically abusing her daughter by forcing her to work outside, run barefoot on dirt roads, and denied her, once again, food and water. According to the agreement, quote, her daughter's feet had been repeatedly injured and the wounds were evident by scabs, blisters, and peeling skin. She, too, had been repeatedly sunburned. Now, something to note here, Ruby's attorney made a formal statement regarding the status of the case and also included that Jody isolated Ruby and that she was being subjected to a distorted sense of like morality shaped by Jody. So basically saying that the reason why Jody um, or that Ruby was acting this way is because of her the bad influence that um, Jody had on Ruby. Right, right. Which I'm calling major bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she's an adult. You're in a, yeah, exactly. And I mean, perhaps maybe she was, you know, reiterating your bad behavior and was right. like supporting it, which made her think like, oh, I'm doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, like you're the one that fucking abused your kids. You evil piece of shit. Well, like they, and the weird thing is they both did it. And I can see how, you know, she's being isolated by Jody, but at the same time, she was doing this before. Right. Jody. Right. Maybe not as extreme, mm -hmm. but. No, it's horrific. So um, actually, their attorney um, tweeted out a full statement saying, our client is working with the prosecutor's office and anticip anticipates resolving this matter quickly by entering a plea agreement with the court on Monday, December 18th. That already happened. Um, Ruby Frankie is a devoted mother and is also a woman committed to constant improvement. Initially, Miss Frankie believed that Jody Hildebrandt had the insight to offer a path to continual improvement. And Miss Hildebrandt took advantage of this quest and twisted it into something heinous. And these are just more of like how she was isolated. Yeah, they basically, she was isolated from her extended family, other uh, older children, her husband, who's Kevin, who they've filed for, he's filed for divorce a while back. Um, but basically blaming Jody on this whole thing, saying that it's because of Jody that Frankie abused her kids, which is just absurd. So now we get into Jody's hearing, which, um, like we said, was on December 27th, so a little bit after Ruby's. Um, and she also pled guilty to four or six counts of child abuse. Um, in the plea agreement, she admitted to, quote, knowingly inflicting and allowing another adult to inflict serious physical injuries upon two young children living at her home. Um, as we previously mentioned, during outdoor work, Ruby's nine-year-old daughter sustained injuries and burns to her feet while walking barefoot and Hildebrandt also, quote, either physically forced or coerced uh, the daughter to jump into a cactus. Yeah. Multiple fuck? times. Like, and it does, like, people have said with Jody, and we'll get into it a little bit more, but this isn't her first go around. And she's extremely, like, not influential. She's extremely uh, pushy about manipulative. things. Yeah, manipulative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, since. Jody and Ruby's um, allegations came out in August. Jody's niece, Jessie, also abu was abused by Jody, has come out and shared her experience with Jody and her thoughts on the charges against her aunt. So here are a few clips from that interview. Let's go ahead and watch. And your aunt has admitted to some heinous acts of abuse against children. Have you been shocked to see any of this? Um, shocked, no. Um, it's like how funny. I went through very, very similar experiences when I was 16 years old, when I was left under her care. And the similarities are um, hard to listen to. This has been a pattern of hers, you know, for 15 years, at least, if not longer. I'm, I can't speak to what she did before me, but um, this is not, this is not new. It's, it's hard to 
quantify and um, the, everything that happened because it was not just physical abuse, but it was emotional and severe spiritual abuse as well because of the culture that already exists within the Mormon church. Um, she took advantage and there was uh, being duct taped and starved and being emotionally isolated and tortured, being forced to sleep outside in the snow, being telling my family that it was because she was afraid that I was going to murder her in her sleep, telling me that Satan was working through me. And all the while I believed what she was telling me. I, um, she believed then, and I'm certain she believes now that, um, this delusional idea that God is literally working through her and that she used Pause this real idea quick. and dude, the whole idea of like, Oh, God's working through me. Then why are you being a fucking psycho? Right. Yeah. Like <clears throat> you're evil. That's God's work. Yeah, that makes you? no sense. Yeah. You, that makes you look worse. And I guess in like her, not her defense, cause I'm not defending anything that every, any disgusting thing that she did, but in her like twisted mindset, it's like these things are caught. Like she's doing this to make the kids repent to get them into heaven. Mm-hmm. And it's that- like how how you're so distorted. If that's how you really, if that's like your reality, you're that is so distorted. So scary. And so many people experience that type of religious abuse, spiritual abuse, where it's like the whole idea, of like fear God, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's. I'm not saying everyone who's religious you know, thinks this way or any, or acts this way. And that's not what I'm saying. But like so many people go through like, oh, I have the fear of God in me or, oh, I live my life as a God fearing person. Oh yeah. That's like a, that's, that's insane. A, yeah. That's like a, those are multiple sayings that people like, will I don't know, live bumper stickers. Oh yeah. But to me, it's so twisted. I'm like, God wants you to be afraid Right. And also now you're using that excuse to abuse your kids, you s- sick, sick human. How would you, like, how is having them run barefoot on a dirt road right. going to repent them? Right. Or have, like, like what is it uh, supposed to, like, make them realize how good they have it and then follow Christ more? If I were a kid going through this, I'd be like, so God wants me to suffer? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make me want to follow God. That would make me want to leave God. But I guess the whole idea is like, will you put the fear of God in them because they're afraid to leave because they don't want to go to hell. Right. And I don't know, like, it's so, it's so bizarre to me, like having that, like, I mean, it's so, I mean, it's so backwards. Like, it's so backwards. Like, I, I mean, I'm not religious, but I thought the whole thing of God was like loving and everything right. is good. And like, you know what I mean? Like he does things God loves for you. No you. What. God loves you. Um, And it's so crazy to me that <laughs> the fact that like, if you just ask God for forgiveness, no matter what you've done in this Thought world, yeah. there's rapists, there's murderers up there with the best people in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if that's really that, like, that logic, it's like, I guess, I don't know, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just weird. You know what I was thinking is, and I would probably need to fact check this, but um, her niece talks about, like, Mormonism. And obviously, it's not all like that, I'm not saying, but that show, The Duggar. Yeah. That documentary. They're, not Mormon. they're uh oh. IBLP. But, but they're just like the way that this lady is like treating those kids yeah. kind of gives me that. It vibe. kinda does. Because the whole like that like um earning your mm-hmm, documentary was the IBLP way is very much so like teaching your kids to you know there's like a obey the obey authority no matter what. Yeah, the um, IBLP is it stands for uh, B- Institute of Basic Life Principles. Yeah. Um, so it's all about learning to respect the respect your authority, respect your elders. There's there's like an umbrella, and the, t- the very top of the umbrella is God. Then it's um, man, man. Then it's woman. Then it's ch- children. And um, I think a lot of religion in general, out, even outside of Christianity, is like. I think a lot of people sadly use it as a way to manipulate people and scare people into believing it. 
But I see, I do see what you mean, Sydney. Um, I think there is like a lot of overlap. It and, like, seems the, like it. Yeah. And, and I think it's just, you know, they're, they're instilling fear in them. To, mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? I think it's all very like, I don't know. I think it's, there's a lot of overlaps and there's just a lot of overlaps in all religion in general, like mm-hmm. you said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, we can keep watching. The She believed that she had these dreams to rationalize all of the mistreatment that she she put me through. If someone at church came up to me to speak to me, I wasn't allowed to speak to them. She has pulled me up, like kicked, dropped, like kicked my knees out from underneath me and pulled me upstairs, dragged me downstairs. Um, she tied me up in a car and made me lay down on the ground and drove me into the mountains and made me run for hours and hours and hours. Oh, She's so scary. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, don't this has been a, it's a, it's been a hearing the list of what she did to this, these children right before his, um, I haven't been as involved in, in, or as in listening to this trial because it's very difficult to have it reflected back to me. I went to the cops and they did nothing. She was forcing me to run for hours and hours and hours because her philosophy that she stood by was this idea, this obsession with confession, that if I would just confess to my sins, that I would be getting better. And because I was getting worse emotionally, that it was obviously that I wasn't confessing to everything. And her idea was that she was gonna make it so uncomfortable that it would force the sin out, which is just torture. The statement that her lawyer put out was a joke. This idea that she now just conveniently wants these children to heal. Yeah. I don't think, Ru- okay, to so say what, what Ruby has said, that Jody has manipulated her and, and, and everything. Jody is, or Ruby is complicit and irresponsible for her children. And I do not want to take that away. Jody is, the, is one of the most powerful people I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I that's dare so say she's probably one of the most powerful people that anyone could experience. Yeah, that's terrifying. Yeah, so Jesse, I, I do want to ask, you know, Frankie blames your aunt for isolating her, for corrupting her uh, morality. Do you believe that? Do you believe those claims? I can't speak to how deeply that goes because I know that Ruby has been in the public eye with her YouTube channel for a very long time. And I would say that the way that she is, from what I understand and what I've seen, the way that she has handled her children has been concerning for a while. Um, so I don't. She she's still responsible for the choices that she made. And I think both things can be true. I think Jody has a lot of influence and a lot of power that people cannot understand unless they've experienced it. Also, I'm thinking like, what could these kids have done? How could they have sinned so bad as children to warrant this kind of like mistreatment, like making them, starving them Mm -hmm. to make them repent or making them sleep outside in the snow? Like, what did they do? To make them think they deserve that to begin with. Right, and it's like their entire perception of the world is, you know, like, if if I'm I'm not loved unless I'm getting abused. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Right. Like how they're good I'm me experiencing this abuse is because they love me. Right. That is so wrong. And the two older kids, they experienced it more but or experienced it with the the YouTube. Right. So because they were, you know, on the in a lot of those episodes. But yeah, these poor two, like her youngest two just totally it's horrific. I hope they go to jail for a long time. I hope they burn in Evil hell for people. eternity, to be honest. Because, True. like, honestly, like, I just don't understand, like, if their thought process is, I'm hurting my kids to make them repent, what am I getting? Like, what does that mean for me? Like, I, how am I repenting? How am I going to repent? You're oh, repenting because yeah. you're, you're confessing? You're not confessing to anything, though. I mean, and this is, like, obvious in the fucking court trial, like, at the beginning, yeah. they were like, no, that didn't happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they were completely... Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you're... A fucking hypocrite. hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. You're a piece of shit. You do not deserve to have children. I know. It's terrible. No, it's so true. Well, I think, too, since they both offered a plea agreement and they were, like, accepted. Yeah. Now they're just going to go, like, on in February and pretty much be given a sentence. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, 
Do you guys, I don't know. Do you guys feel like justice is is? Do you think that do you guys think that justice is working for the kids, or what do you guys feel about it? I mean, I think it will show more when we know what the sentence is. Mm -hmm. I hope it's a long time. But I also don't think that just because your your abuser is now being sentenced that all of a sudden it's like, oh, justice Fixes was served. Everything. Now we're good. Yeah. Like those kids are going to be yeah affected by this for a long time. And there's a lot of work in their whole life. And there's a lot of work to be done. I mean, look at um, Jody's niece. Yeah. The fact that she, you know, just what by talking about what, what she went through, which sounds horrific. It was you can tell it was like obviously triggering to her. And, right. Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, I think they have a lot of work to do, sadly. And I think it makes it even worse that they are in the public eye. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. this is bad enough as it is. But now you have your, I mean, I know like the videos of them, you know, being held underwater and stuff aren't, are online or not the videos, the, the um, scenarios of them aren't. Recorded, recorded and being put online but a lot of very questionable and uncomfortable things have been put out online so now you have to deal with the, pu the public, the public scrutiny, scrutiny yeah. and their opinion and just know it and the embarrassment of knowing yeah. that so much of this crap is now put out there and you know like there's going to be those people that are like jody and like ruby who are going to still blame the put the blame on the kids yeah you know probably what I mean? yeah yeah it's just disgusting it's so sad. I really hope they go to jail for a long time. I, yeah. I'm really curious what the whole situation is with um, Kevin, though. Me too, dude. Honestly, I am so sus of him. Like, I, he hasn't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just so sus with him. Because, like, how do you not know? Right. You, like, where you did can't he think just... his kids were, like, during all that time? Like, I don't want to be like, because, again, as far as I'm aware, there's no, there's nothing out there in the public right now that's pointing About, yeah. towards him also being involved in it. So I don't want to like no. falsely accuse him, but it's just very confusing to me. Like you said, like you, you, you had no idea this was going on. Mm -hmm. I feel like there, I mean, I feel like there is some culp culpability though. Like at the end of the day, your job as a parent is to protect your children. And yeah. you both failed at that. Mm -hmm. um, whether he was, whether he knew or didn't know, you're still culpable for not making sure your kids were not, to make you for making sure your kids were harmed or like, were safe. You know how I mean? do you not know that though? I I swear he had to have known because it's like where where were you? Nuts, where were yeah. you after the after her son was held underwater? Where were you when they were forced to run through the dirt and were starved and yeah. thrown in cactus and thrown in ca like from May to August was like when like, it was really bad. That's three it's months. not just emotional trauma; it's yeah. physical, spiritual, physical trauma. everything. So it's like there's literally like proof on their bodies right. that this happened did they did he just not notice that i don't know i wonder if he was like wasn't around or whatnot because it seemed like and again i don't know for sure but it seemed like ruby was staying at jody's because her yeah. kids were at jody's right and they seemed like they were together quite often well also two of the kids were with jody right so the other three three four whatever how many other passengers there are they like they were probably with the dad, right? I don't know. I mean, um, who knows? Yeah, I'm speculating. Assume? Well, the but oldest were like like the oldest sister they left. Moved, yeah. Oh, okay. some of them were moved out already. But I don't know, dude. Like you didn't see your kids for three months. Like that's just highly sus to me. I don't know. Yeah. Or whatever it may be. I don't know. There's just like so many things that aren't adding up, and I'm I'm wondering if he's gonna if he's gonna take the stand and testify against them. I don't think there's anything there. It's. They took a plea agreement down. They're just oh, so they don't sentenced. have to. Oh, okay. Well, there's then. nothing. There's no like, are you guilty or not? They <clears throat> basically admitted to guilt yeah. to some degree, and now they're being sentenced. Well, and that's so fucked up because the, like, they they got off easier with the plea agreement than they would have if they had gone to trial because like there's so much evidence against them. Right. That I mean, that's on their part, it. yeah, on their part, it's smart, smart for them, for to, them. To, to take the plea. I'm sure their lawyers were like, dude, fucking take this because otherwise this is gonna get really bad. Especially with Jody, like her. Um, I don't think we saw that part, but her niece was like, there's so much on her. Yeah. Like, there is. if she's been doing this for that long, like, there's so much on her yeah. that they would have, yeah. Another reason why they t probably took the plea agreement is because if they went to trial, they would have to have, like, all their, their the testify and stuff, right? So all their dirty laundry would come out and it would be yeah, all be public. Mm -hmm. Damn. Honestly, 
for the sake of the kids as well. Like, I guess that's like a silver lining. Yeah, I guess it depends but, on how you look at it. You could look at it both ways. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. It's disgusting. Despicable. <sighs> Anyways, um, yeah, we'll keep you guys updated if there's anything else that happens. I mean, obviously in February there will be. Yeah. And then I hope, honestly, to that that's the end of that. And there's nothing else that come out and these poor kids can start to heal. Yeah. So that's it. Um, thanks, Sid, for joining yeah. me in the hot seat. No you did problem. great. Thank you. Excellent work. Appreciate it. Your hair looks amazing. Sydney okay. thinks her hair looks bad. Dude, yeah. Sydney has some of the best hair I've ever I'm like, seen. literally, what are you talking? It looks so good all the time. Thank you. Dude, like, literally. I, feel like I do the same thing every day. But. Same. But even up in a bun, dude, like, it looks so good. Like, I yeah. I have a flat head in a bun, and your head looks really great. <laughs> you have a good head shape. You have a good head shape. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, that's going to be it for this week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for starting the new year off with us. Um, yeah, we're really excited about 2024. I think we're going to have some great things coming. Um, and that's it. If there's anything specific you want us to talk about next week, leave it in the comments or tweet us at the underscore sesh podcast. Um, I think we still have a few hoodies. I think a few. Like, not many tiny amount so if for some reason you are wanting one you can check the sesh.shop um and see if there's any in there i think we still have a few but yeah once they're gone they'll be gone for good so that's it thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next sesh but until then keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh oh good job yes. guys that was cute that was.